Hello and welcome to Gas Tank. My name is Rick Wakeman and my compatriot in crime over there, Mr. Tony Ashton. <laughs> well, this week on the programme, we've tried to take a few people out of the context you might normally see them. And a very good sort of drinking pal of ours, our musician pal, we've taken from a band called Status Quo. Mr. Rick Parfit, song called Little Lady, and this is the Ashton Wakeman Status Quo. It is kind of you to come along. I mean, you come along every week. Well, yeah, it's 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 a good show. It's a good mm -hmm. atmosphere, and uh, I didn't have anything to do, and I did come down to represent all the lads. people today. Very very seriously. I mean, you you did the two numbers for us on your own. Have you? Did you start off on your own, or was all the time were you part of a band? No, I did. Um, when I was twelve years old. Well, in fact, when I was ten, I got given a guitar for Christmas, like you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of young kids do, I suppose. And uh, I just had a, wanted to play the guitar, and I got this guitar when I was ten. Tuned it up best I knew how. I didn't know how to tune it, but I tuned it into something which I could hear was sort of right. And I, I always remember the first song I ever played on the guitar was Mary's Boy Child. Do you remember that? Mm. Well, I was born in Bethlehem, it's not mm. holy, but yeah. yeah and it, it was, was at Christmas, so it was very apt. Yeah, it was the first song that was written about me, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it made a few people weep. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing you learned? Yeah. And, and I went on from there, yeah. and at 12 years old, I was sort of playing around the clubs at weekends. My dad was driving me around these working men's clubs. And they used to earn a sort of a fiver over the weekend, you know, mm -hmm. which in those days, I mean, it's a long while ago. Mm. And uh, it, was, it was quite a lot of money, you know, mm. and it was, it was great. My dad used to take it all, mind you, yeah. you know. And then after the war, you formed Quo. <laughs> <laughs> who actually formed Quo? Uh, Alan and Francis met at Sedgill School in Beckenham mm -hmm. on the rugby field and formed it and uh, well cutting a very long story short then mm -hmm. John Coleman joined and Roy Lyons then I joined in 1967 how did you join um, well I in fact was with another group called uh, 
Well, I won't tell you what they were called, but it's such a silly name. Go on, tell us. No, I won't. No. We want to know what they were called, don't we? <laughs> well, we were called the Jerks, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Oh, I left the jerks and uh... <laughs> you stopped jerks. Yeah, right. Yeah, yes, I stopped jerking. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I, in, in the time when I was with the jerks, we uh... <laughs> I met Quo. Uh, we were all doing a summer season. <laughs> yeah, cool. I was in the gaiety. <laughs> That's good. I'm ridiculous. I was in the gaiety theatre with the jerks. <laughs> <laughs> and Quo, who were the spectres then, were over the rock ballroom, right? So every mm -hmm. night after fishing with the jerks, I used to go over and uh, <laughs> see the spectres. And see the spectres. And we, we built up a great friendship. And soon after that season ended mm -hmm. in Butlins in Minehead, we, I sort of kept in touch with, with Alan, mm -hmm. the bass player, with Quo. We became quite good friends. And, uh, I finished with my band and I was doing nothing. In fact, I became a baker. I was a baker for a while. And I had this baker's round, you know, I used to go around delivering... Baker! You know, really? I was doing that for a while, yeah. <laughs> really enjoyed that. When you joined the band, was it Quo then or was it... <coughs> we, originally, it was, it came out of a shoe. It's absolutely true. It like these Italian shoes, beautiful Italian shoes, called mm. Quo Vardis. And our manager at the time was a plumber. Smashing boat, though. And, uh... He saw Quo Vardis in the show and said, you should call yourself Quo Vardis, you know. So we shuffled it around a bit and it eventually became status quo, then came mm. Matchstick Men, and away we went. Mm. Yeah. Most bands last about ten years, uh, the best, and then sort of fold up or really change into, and, and like, diverse and digress into different things. Quo somehow, one of the only bands, along with, I would say, perhaps The Who, mm. who managed just to to ride all the storms, because you had a few storms in yeah, Quo, didn't you? Yeah, well, you see, the thing about Quo, we've never... We've never given way to conformity. We've never, like, whatever trend is in, you know, we've never sort of tried to go towards that trend, like whether it be, you know, disco or punk music, whatever, you know. I, I've always seen Quo as this huge sort of steam train and it just rips its way... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's at lunchtime, yeah. It <laughs> just rips its way right through the middle of all this somehow, yeah. you know, and... Uh, and th there's no sort of dictation in the band either, you know, nobody's like, well, we must do this and we're going to do this, you know. It's 100% uh, it's, uh, effort from, from everyone in the band and we all pitch in our ideas, we all write the songs and it works quite well, you know. What about stuff on your, on your own? Because now, like you've done the programme for us, you've mm. got your own studio, you know, mm. out, in, out in Surrey, you're working. Mm. Have you had ambitions to do solo projects at all? Oh, yeah, I think everybody has, really. I mean, you're with bands yourself, mm. you know, and uh, there comes a time, I think, in everybody's career when, when you've got to think to yourself, well, OK, it's great lean on the, the big, powerful shoulder of Quo, but what can I actually do individually, myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I've started writing some stuff and, you know, doing some bits and pieces, and the beauty of it is I've got my studio there, so I can mm. take my time and, uh, you know, I'm not hustled any money hustles about how much the mm. studio's costing. And I can get into my own stuff and, and do it properly. But uh, there's, no, there's no great rush, you know. There's a, still a, an awful lot to be done with Quo yet. I mean, mm. we've still mm. got targets to go for yet, and which we're still going to go for, you know. Yeah. Well, Quo and yourself give a lot of people a lot of enjoyment. Are you happy? Yeah. What, with right. the band? Yeah, and with everything. Oh, oh, yeah, very much so, yeah. Great. Well, I hope it continues. Thank and you. come back again on the next series. Okay. It's been a pleasure having you along. <laughs>